हेलो एंड वेलकम टू दिस स्पेशल ब्रॉडकास्ट ऑन भारत शक्ति डॉट इन आई एम नितिन गोखले विथ मी टुडे इज अ स्पेशल गेस्ट लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल के एच सिंह और लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल के हिमालय सिंह एंड आई टेल यू वाई आई आई एम एक्चुअली सेइंग के हिमालय सिंह वेलकम जनरल टू दिस स्पेशल ब्रॉडकास्ट एंड स्पेशल डिस्कशन we are speaking because uh, you have written this uh, wonderful book about uh, your life in the army and uh, your reminiscences and your memories uh, and uh, of course uh, what you did as an army officer uh, who reached uh, three star rank uh, first manipuri to uh, reach uh, three star rank congratulations and uh, to for the book and of course being the first manipuri uh, you know i was uh, looking at the book uh, and uh, sort of uh, reading through the book one of the key uh elements of the book is your um, candid nature you have not uh, held back too many things i would say uh you have started with uh, why you were named uh, himalaya if you can tell us uh, why were you named himalaya for uh, manipuri to be named himalaya is something which is intriguing me now manipur is in the sub himalayan region as you know sub himalayan region sure but basically i think uh, after the mount everest was conquered that time you know himalayan name this name called himalaya became very famous after that uh, first scaling on the mount 53 uh, i uh, and uh, I, i was born 3 year 3 4 years after that right that's how i have been named okay so your mother named you uh, himalaya my my aunt your aunt named yeah. you and also there is a belief that you know if you have a name after mountains and big uh, they say you know then uh, the boy or the girl he or she does it uh, also you know, rises, yeah, rises. Uh, to become <laughs> <laughs> and you indeed have uh, one of the things uh, which uh, stands out as i said is your candid uh, i won't call it confessions but your candid nature in writing about your experiences i will sort of go back and forth uh, in your experiences uh, particularly on kargil for instance because i also covered the kargil war so i know what exactly you're talking about you have been candid in saying that there was a intelligence failure national intelligence failure and uh, your experience there also suggested to you that it could have been better handled perhaps give us a sense of what happened that time 21 years ago it's a longish kind of a thing sure. i'll make it short yeah. firstly there was certainly was a gross uh, intelligence failure i think our uh, we are higher ups were not very very updated with what was happening but at the ground level the soldiers uh, at our level that is i was a commanding officer at that time a colonel a colonel and uh, we most of us the, the you know uh, the, our focus was towards conventional kind of a thing so we didn't expect this kind of a uh, you know uh, uh, venture by pakistan and uh, pakistanis actually outwitted us but in the end what matters is everything is well what ends well i think but i wish uh, we could have done a little more because musharraf certainly had much more designs uh, than what we initially thought we could have avoided uh, all those uh, mishaps and casualties and uh, almost a limited war could have been avoided had we been a little more uh proactive from our side sure yeah and uh, at during that tenure you also uh, were deployed on the siachen glacier yes so uh, one of the beliefs uh, of uh, subsequent uh, leadership in the military in the indian, indian army was that uh, musharraf wanted to avenge uh, siachen yes and kargil was actually mm-hmm. the result of that mm-hmm. uh, desire that he had uh, did you get that feeling because uh, when you were there uh, in siachen uh it was linked to kargil in a way uh, because uh, that certainly. is uh, clear certainly uh nitin i'll try to connect it with what is happening in depsang and uh, you know and also the chinese activities right. and was, some activities yes. correct you know in mm-hmm. places like skardu yes in between is the siachen glacier right. and that area is very very significant as a commanding officer i didn't have that kind of a uh you know thought process because i was only concerned about my areas and left and right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens at that, that level, level. yeah that certainly level, level. but in hindsight mm. it certainly he did definitely plan something far bigger than what he uh, you know what uh, it unfolded in the initial far bigger right yeah 
No, so uh, that uh, if you go back to uh, you know your days as a younger officer, hmm. and later uh, you uh, did command uh, on the line of control uh, in uh, in 16 Corps, uh, and before that as a major general in Rajouri, 25th Division is a, one of the biggest divisions of the Indian Army. Yes. Uh, so what was that experience like in dealing with the Pakistanis? See, uh, my understanding is that. Uh, and that Pakistani soldiers are, I have written in my book also, that uh, they are good fighters like Indian soldiers. But I think their officers, particularly in the higher ranks, they have lost their, uh, I think, uh, moorings towards the profession because they have got too involved possibly in other things than professional soldiering. Uh, soldiering. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing is that they were highly, highly, under, uh, I mean, ill-equipped. Compared to, I see. Uh, Ill-equipped means in critical areas, mm -hmm. you know, except for some uh, items that uh, Chinese or you know assistance here and there or from the Arab countries, some of them. Otherwise, I think uh, my experience was that they wanted to uh, create. I mean, uh, carry out some kind of a psychological warfare to. Uh, dominate us. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they were not. Uh, they are not they, a match to. They are no match. match. They are no match. Right. And I'll also add here that yes. Chinese are also um, Chinese soldiers also mm -hmm. uh, on similar. They can because of their nature of their conscripts and mm -hmm. all that. Sure. I read both of them. Yeah. Uh, their focus, I think, is uh, not as much as ours. It's not that we are the super no. you know, army. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, hollowness also. Yes. But compared to uh, Pakistan, we have far better. Far better, better off. Yeah, yeah. But you also had experience of uh, Sikkim dealing with the Chinese yeah. in that sense. And you just mentioned about the Chinese army. And in, in your view, when you were in Sikkim, and subsequently, obviously, you have studied as a yeah. general who's uh, served in the army for so long. Uh, since you mentioned the current uh, standoff, which is just uh, sort of uh, disengagement has begun in uh, Ladakh, what do you think uh, the Chinese were trying to do? I mean, they've tried this in, in the Northeast earlier, they've tried this uh, in uh, Ladakh also, but this time the standoff was quite prolonged. I retired four years ago. Right. So what I know is uh, yeah, good from, as uh, yeah. the same, but my hunch, yes. you know, whatever I could uh, oh. make out is that China will never ever, uh, you know, accept a rising India to their level. I don't think, uh, I, I am of the opinion that they will somehow try to do all kinds of proxy, all kinds of warfare, trade, economic, whatever, to keep us well below their level in the next maybe 15, 20 years. Right. I think that is part of the grand design mm -hmm. that they keep poking at the borders. They mm -hmm. keep, you know, sometimes make a... a uh, you know, make an issue somewhere there in the right. east, in the north, mm -hmm. in the central sector. Right. And I also suspect that they might even increase their activities with regard to the northeastern insurgents. Right. That's possible because they've yeah. done that in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. But let's switch uh, subject and come to your personal, uh, yeah. uh, you know, growth in the army and yeah. you know, personal life. Uh, mm. You first went to Sainik School, Gualpara. Yes. Uh, which was, I think, perhaps uh, one of the few schools, uh, only yeah, uh, Sainik School in, in Northeast that time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how was that experience for a boy from uh, a village, as, uh, as you have mentioned, to go there? And did it change your life uh, completely? See, I'll, I'll put my, this thing as the, the, the most important factor was dealing with many of many you know students from every corner of northeastern states. In fact, they were from Nagaland, from Arunachal, from you know uh, uh, from uh, uh, Mizoram, and this this was a great learning for me. Learning myself, otherwise in the northeast, as you know, you yourself as a specialist of northeast. Most of the tribes, most of the uh, ethnic groups are cocoon in their confined own, to their own uh, areas. So yeah. that was a great learning, you know. Right. You know, it opens up your mind sure. about uh, this thing. And of course, since my ambition to join the army was aligned with the school district, so it uh, it was. It very, did, but in fact, I, I read uh, you've written that you at one point in time you wrote, "I am going to be a brigadier in the Indian <laughs> Army" as a youngster, <laughs> and you did achieve that. I mean, you achieved much more beyond that. So what was that? I mean, what made you do that? Write in your diary, I think. 
Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I think, 10 years old. Right. My diary, that diary is still with me. Oh, in great. fact, it is in Australia. My youngest brother. Okay. And Stick second, through. I have to show it to his children. Right. Okay. <laughs> because, you know, North Eastern, uh, in the entire North East, only Brigadier Silo had been Brigadier. Right. Uh, when I grew up, there was nobody else. Brigadier Silo was such a name. Such a, yes. So I thought Brigadier was perhaps the last rank to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I said, I want to be a brigadier. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I am so glad you mentioned Brigadier Silo because yeah. I've had a great experience with him, which I uh, must tell you. Mm-hmm. That when I first went to Mizoram as yeah. a 21-year-old boy, as a young journalist, very new journalist, and I was told to interview him. Mm-hmm. When he looked at me as a chief minister, he had retired by that time, mm-hmm. he was in politics, and he was chief minister of Mizoram. And then he looked at me one look and said, uh, what do you know about Mizoram? Mm-hmm. I frankly said, I don't know anything. He said, okay, go and spend two days uh, in the library and then come and interview me. He was that kind of a man. Yeah. And then later when I went to Tawang, I saw the Korea Brigade or the 190 Brigade. He had mm. commanded. Uh, mm-hmm. and great respect for that man uh, mm. that way. So yeah. I'm glad uh, we have something in common in that sense, <laughs> the inspiration. But uh, you also have been very, ta- I said you were a candidate I, I started at the beginning of the program. But you were also very tactful. Uh, when it uh, came to the crunch. And I am referring to the uh, your uh, tenure with General V.K. Singh and his uh, spat, if I can say, with General Deepak Kapoor at that point in time. Uh, how did you manage to hold something back when the General had asked you when you were on his staff and yet managed to survive and become a three-star? Uh, firstly, Nitin, uh, General V.K. Singh and myself, we have grown, uh, we have stayed in the same bunker in Punch. Right. You know, he was a captain. I was a second lieutenant. My yeah. bunker broke. So <laughs> you I had to go and stay with him. Stay with him. Okay. So we have grown up together. Right. When he was the boss in Calcutta, which you are referring the to. Eastern Army commander. Uh, I think sometime in life, one has to uh, follow what do you think is right. Okay. And I, I have, uh, I feel that what I did was right. And he also accepted that. He never held it against you. Yeah, yeah, obviously. (laughs) Otherwise, you (laughs) You wouldn't be here. I I wouldn't have. So, possibly because I thought it was the right thing to do. Right. Yeah. No, but that that, uh, comes out very clearly in your book. Ethical leadership, ethical conduct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think your uh, thesis in uh, CDM, the College of Defense Management, was also about ethical leadership. CDM, also in NDC. Right. Oh, I I missed that. Mm -hmm. But uh, CDM, I read you Mm -hmm. had a, what was the uh, topic in NDC? Same ethical Ethical uh, leadership leadership because uh, I felt that uh, leadership is not about just about knowledge. It's not about just about, you know, uh, good personality, great personality, unless you have the inner strength. Right. How do you get the inner strength to be a leader in the true sense? Sure. To command the troops that are under you. I think it needs a little more than just, you know, factual knowledge somewhere, some, you know, knowledge about... Uh, various uh, general awareness or some good personality or something. It right. requires a lot in in you or in a leader. So, uh, therefore, according to me, I think any without ethics is no leader at all. I don't think uh, I can, particularly in the def- uh, armed, forces armed forces where you have to lead your men. And it's a question of life and death in yeah. many cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. And the troops see through to uh, the commanders. They are very intelligent. Yeah, they are very intelligent. <laughs> mm-hmm. They see uh, how well-meaning you are in right. what you say and what you do. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's a very valid point. So in your second innings, when you retired, uh, and uh, now you've been chairman of the Manipur Public Service Commission, after that you are helping in the Naga peace talks in a way. Uh, as uh, such an accomplished Manipuri, uh, what would be your message to a uh, young generation in Manipur? And uh, I know, I'm sure you want them to also accomplish and uh, achieve many things in life, the younger generation in Manipur or in the Northeast uh, generally. What would be your message? Nitin, actually, I don't consider myself as really accomplished or something. Uh, responsibility comes to you. You do your best. I think that is the... You did that. Uh, uh, and the satisfaction is that basically. Right. This book was primarily meant to motivate people from Northeast in general. Right. And Manipur in particular. Correct. As you know, Manipur today has the highest per capita 
number of officers in the Indian Armed Forces. True. Highest. Correct. So I wanted them to, uh, more people to join, at least to try. Yes. And to, uh, you know, to, uh, to be, um, you know, officers in Indian Armed Forces, such a, I mean, it's a beautiful organization. Exactly. It's a, it's a beautiful experience in, in the Army. So I basically, I wanted to motivate them. And this is the, uh, the message that I have is that they can do it because all the qualities that you are looking as a leader in the armed forces, yes. uh, the youth in Manipur and Northeastern states, they have it already have it in them. I can vouch for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> already have it in them. Some refining, some you know, guidance and they can do it. Indeed. In fact, uh, there is a young uh, boy or an officer now from Assam mm. who's got back-to-back -back, uh, Shaurya Chakras, uh, sorry, uh, SM Gallantry, uh, Sena Medal for Gallantry, yeah. uh, this year and the uh, previous year. Yeah. And I'm glad that more and more uh, Northeasterners and more and more Manipuris are now joining uh, the armed forces and uh, doing their bit uh, for this country. And you, again, as I said, remain an inspiration for the younger generation. This book actually brings out your personality and uh, what you... Uh, hold dear in thank your you, life. Sir. Thank, thank you. you for being here and thank you for giving us your time and uh, your insights. Thank you, Nitin. Thank Pleasure. you so much.